schools are under increasing pressure to address controversial sexual topics in the classroom. Topics like homosexuality and same-sex marriage, even to kids as young as kindergarten. What can parents do? This is the Citizen Link Report. I'm Carrie Gordon Earl, sitting in for Stuart Shepard, along with Candy Cushman, our education analyst at Citizen Link. School classrooms are the source of more than reading, writing, and arithmetic these days. Increasingly, topics with sexual themes are ending up in the lesson plans. Candy, thanks for joining us today. Yes, Carrie, good to be with you again. You know, as, as we look at what's happening with some of this curricula in the schools, the topic comes up with tolerance, teaching tolerance, uh, teaching kids not to bully, but it can cross over, I think, into almost indoctrination of kids with young themes. Is that what you're seeing? That's absolutely right. We're seeing this increasing trend of homosexuality lessons being couched within courses and programs that have innocent sounding titles like tolerance lessons, family diversity lessons, um, anti-bullying prevention. And the problem with that is it sounds innocent enough. So maybe parents don't really look into that, but then they have a shock and a surprise when their home, their uh, kid comes home with a book like King and King about two princes getting married. Mm -hmm. Do you have any examples? I mean, when we're talking about curricula, what should what types of things should parents have their ears and their eyes open for? Well, I can give you just a couple of examples of things that really do go way beyond bullying prevention into just flat out indoctrination. Um, first of all, I remember we covered a story about some Minnesota parents that found out that one of the largest homosexual activist groups in the nation, the Human Rights Campaign, was piloting an elementary curriculum in their schools. It was called Welcoming Schools, but the pilot version of this curriculum, they found out, had an exercise called the Family Photo Diversity Exercise or something to that effect. Um, and and what I, I looked at this version of the pilot edition, I saw that it was for children as young as first grade. And so just imagine um, this, if you will, first grade students being given photos, a group of photos, and told to arrange them into families. But lo and behold, once they begin the exercise, they discover that basically this photo puzzle is rigged and they are forced to make some families with same-sex parents or two moms and that's what the instructions in the curriculum say for educators you know that's that's going to happen it's supposed to force kids to do this and so I really can't imagine you know a more blatant example of indoctrination than that than a photo puzzle for kids as young as first grade being rigged. Now there was another one that you told me about that really speaks to I think the agenda if you will here and that is not one of just tolerance mm -hmm. but going much further than that. Yes. Well, I've seen another curriculum and this one is promoted by the uh, a Glisten chapter in Connecticut that was co-sponsoring it with a Planned Parenthood um, affiliate there and they produced this resource for educators and in fact Glisten the Gay Lesbian and Straight Education Network promotes this has promoted it on its national website for educators to use. Um, and it has all these exercises to basically give a one-sided promotion of homosexuality to kids. And there's one exercise in there called the homophobia scale. And this is listed as appropriate for high school age. And basically, it would give students um, a list of homophobic attitudes and a list of positive attitudes. Well, it's kind of amazing that in the list of homophobic attitudes is the words, uh, are the words tolerance and acceptance. So now even acceptance is not good enough. That's considered a homophobic level um, attitude. And what is good enough, nothing short of admiration, quote, nurturance, um, even advocacy, those are listed as positive levels of attitude. And it just reflects what we're seeing. Schools pushing kids way beyond tolerance bullying lessons to you must admire, nurture, and become a political ally of homosexual behavior. Now, the inclusion of this material in the classroom, I would think, can be overwhelming for some students and certainly for their parents. Uh, parents who feel alone and powerless, how, how are they supposed to combat this? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it can feel overwhelming, as you say, to parents that feel like they're going up against maybe a bureaucratic school system, um, powerful political interest groups out there. Um, but the good news is that's why we've created a website called truetolerance.org to equip and empower you as a parent to make your voice heard in a loving and fact-based way. You don't have to feel like you're confronting or complaining to your school official. This website is full of information that you are just offering to them as another resource. It's even got an, an offer of free legal assistance on there. So you're giving them something they don't have. So if I went to the website and I looked, what, what are some of the high points I'm going to want to look for to be able to navigate it and use it effectively? 
Right, well where you want to start is parents should probably go to the educate yourself section just to get kind of a, um, a feel of the land and what's going on and we've listed uh, a lot of what we're talking about here today. Um, so look in the what parents should know box, we've got a list of concerning books to be aware of, um, examples of concerning curriculum that you can read for yourself. Um, and then the next most important section of that website is our Take Action Center. And it's important because it allows you to make your voice heard by directly emailing your school official through this Take Action Center. And I'll just highlight three important tools on there. There's a model anti-bullying policy that's been developed by the Alliance Defense Fund, uh, one of the largest legal groups in the nation representing parents and students. And what this does is allow you to give your school officials a positive alternative um, to acknowledge the problem of bullying but to promote the right solution. And so you're offering them something. Um, you can email that directly to them. And then there's also examples of concerning curriculum. And what we encourage parents to do is to fight deception with facts. So if you have homosexual advocacy groups coming into your school district, you don't know what to do about it, just print out these um, examples of concerning curriculum that these groups are promoting and ask your school officials, is this really the kind of information you want to be giving students that you want to be connecting yourself with? Um, it's not very respectful of other viewpoints. And you can also email it to them through our Take Action Center. And then finally, I'll just mention that we have a legal memorandum from um, expert lawyers at the Alliance Defense Fund that explain to school officials how to navigate parental rights issues, um, religious freedom issues, and they offer free legal assistance to school officials. To give folks an idea of what we're talking about when we talk about curricula, let's play just a little bit of a video that is one of the recommended resources for classroom use. I like to play with gender roles because it confuses people. I like it when a guy thinks that I'm a girl and then figures out that I'm not a girl. I love that. I may be male and I may be straight, but I'm not completely rigid and narrow way of what you would call masculine. I don't know where I stand in the whole manly versus, you know, feminine. I feel like I have both masculine and feminine qualities. I don't feel one way or the other. I'm just not. Female. Candy, as we watch this, it is clear these kids are struggling. And I have to wonder if flooding them with adult themes and messages is really the best way to uh, help them during this time of life. Well, you know, Carrie, that is such an important concern um, because we know from one of the largest studies, peer reviewed studies ever done, of youth that around the age of 12, a significant portion of youth experience, they're unsure about their sexuality. And then that uncertainty starts to diminish as they get older, um, starts to solidify, say, around the age of, of 17 or 18. But what that tells us is that a significant portion of youth in middle and high school years are very vulnerable during this time period. And so it just seems irresponsible and possibly even damaging for school officials just to open up these doors, their doors, to messages from homosexual activist groups, political activist groups, that might push students to prematurely embrace a sexual identity that they're not really equipped to handle. Um, and you know, this is important from a medical and uh, mental health perspective as well. You know, when you're talking about these students really are struggling, um, because we know there is so much data out there showing um, that really children just aren't equipped to handle adult sexual experimentation. And we know it's well documented that the earlier that they engage in sexual experimentation, um, that they are at greater risk for sexually transmitted diseases, emotional harm, both of which can have long lasting impact. And so if we really wanna be, have students be safe, we shouldn't be allowing groups to come in and sexualize our children. We, we wanna protect their hearts and their minds and their health. This is good information. And again, to find out more about the tools that you've created here, Candy, that's uh, truetolerance.org. Thank you. Thank thanks you. for being with us. And thanks to those of you who have contacted us, who've written us with your encouragement, with your thoughts, with comments about our program. You can always reach out to us via email at mail at citizenlink.com mail at citizenlink.com. And in closing, we want to encourage you to pray for young people who are struggling with sexual orientation and gender identity issues. And also to pray for the teachers, for the parents and the families that are coming alongside them during this tender time of life. And remember, stand tall and be heard. <laughs>